Now we're going to take a look at equations with diagrams. This is the second day of lesson one in unit three. When will you teach this lesson? Let's take a look at the big picture to find out. This lesson is actually taught in Math 7 and Math 7 Accelerated. And as I mentioned before, this particular method will be used on day two of this lesson one. What standards the, does this lesson address? Where can you find helpful teacher tips? And what about those presentation strategies? Let's take a look at the scope and sequence to find out. First of all, for Math 7, this is going to be Standard 8 and Standard 9. Math 7 Accelerated, this is going to be Standards 17 and 18. For this particular lesson, you will not need the integer chips or the small plastic cups. These were used on cups and chips from day one but you will need the worksheet modeling equations and chart paper or dry erase boards if you want your students to use those. I'm not gonna go through this entire list, but just know that this is day two, solving with diagrams, and there are your steps for presentation strategies. One major teacher note that I want to emphasize is that this method is great as long as there's only one variable in the equation. Our first example, 3x plus 7 equals 22. We're always going to start with our diagram. This is what our diagram will look like. Three circles and a line that connects each one of those circles. We always start by placing an x below the first circle. So in order to get going, on the diagram method, the questions you want to ask yourself is if you plugged in a value for x, what operation would be performed first? What would be next? So if I take a look at my equation, 3x plus 7, the first thing I would do would be if I plugged in a number for x, the first thing I would do was multiply that number by 3. The second thing I would do is I would add 7. Notice that we place those operations below the line on each section. Now once I do that to whatever number I plug in, my result should be 22. So we've taken care of the first part. This is a great method for emphasizing inverse operations. So that's the next question we're going to ask. You might need to use words like opposite along with inverse operations when you first start this or as a refresher, but they should already be familiar with that term. So in order to determine what's going to go on top of these lines, and this is where we'll solve our equation, you want to ask what is the inverse operation of the one below the line? So for example, here I see plus seven. So above that, I would say minus 7. Over here, I have times 3. So above that line, I would put divided by 3. Now, from here, this is going to really help as far as our method goes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start out here with a 22. And we're going to follow our steps backwards to the variable x. Okay, so when I start with 22, I'm going to say, if I do 22 minus the 7, that result will go here in the circle. So 22 minus 7 gives me 15. My next step would be to take this 15 and divide it by that 3. And my result, I will place in this circle here. So you can tell this is very visual. It's very methodical, as in the steps that you take um, in order to solve it. And so then we would take our final answer and write that here. Now what I love about this method is we can take this and once they've done a few examples, we can place this side by side with the algebraic model 
of solving this equation. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I start off with my 3x plus 7 equals 22. And over here, what I do in order to determine what's my first step, sometimes kids just need to he need help with that first step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look right here to my model, my diagram method. And I'm going to see that the first thing I need to do with the from the 22, the first thing I need to do is subtract 7. Now, they should already be familiar with the idea that whatever I do to one side, I must do to both. So we're going to try, subtract 7 from both sides. As you see, those will cancel out. And what I'll be left with is 3x equals 15. Now, what's important for students to notice is that not only is that 15 here, but we can go over here and we can find it in our diagram. So after I subtracted 7 from 22, I got 15. I got the same thing over here in my algebraic method. Okay, next. My next step is also listed here. So my next step will be to divide by 3. Once again, whatever I do to one side, I must do to both. Put my fraction bars there and divide by both sides by 3. My threes will cancel out. And x is equal to 5. Once again, we notice over here when we divided our 15 divided by 3, we end up with 5. Another great method, and we'll note here that both um, that we can see both the 5 in the diagram as well as the algebraic method. The one thing I want to also point out about this diagram method is that this is great for checking their work. They can take what they found x as, they can multiply that by 3, that's going to give them 15, and then they add 7, that gives them 22. And so this method is good not only for connecting it to the algebraic model, but also for checking. Okay, next. The second example is 4x plus 3. Please press pause here and try this one on your own. Then you'll click play. To check your work. All right, we're back. So we're going to go through this one a little more quickly because you should already have your problem worked out on your paper. So we'll start with that equation again that we place x here under our diagram. And we take a, we pay attention to those operations, what will be done first. If you plugged in a value for x, we'd multiply by 4. Then we would add 3, and the result would be 27. So when I look at my inverse operations, the inverse of adding 3 will be to subtract. The inverse of multiplying by 4 will be to divide. Now we're going to take a look and say we're going to take that 27, subtract 3. That's going to give me 24. And then we're going to take the 24 and divide by 4. So that will give me 6 as a result for my x. Once again, students can check their work. 6 times 4 gives me 24 plus 3 gives me 27. And once again, what's great about this method is that they can then take that diagram and they can translate that into their algebraic equation. So the first step would be to subtract 3 from both sides. That will leave us with 4x equals 24. We see that 24 is both in the equation and in the diagram. Then our next step will be to divide both sides by 4. The 4s will cancel out, leaving us with x equals 6. Once again, they'll also see that 6 is both in the algebraic equation as well as our diagram. Next problem. Take this example, press pause here, and try this one again on your own. Then click play to check your work. All right, let's check and see how you did. 
First, we start with our motto. We place the X below. In this problem, different than the first two, this one we actually would divide by 5 first and then subtract 2, giving us a result of 8. So let's take a look at the inverses for this one. The inverse of subtracting 2 would be to add 2, and the inverse of dividing by 5 would be to multiply by 5. Now let's put in the work. So we'll take that 8 and add 2 to it, giving us a result of 10. And then take that 10 and multiply it by 5, giving us a result of 50. Once again, we can check our answer. 50 divided by 5 gives me 10, minus 2 gives me 8. Okay, once again, a great way to match up this diagram and the algebraic method. This will take the students step by step, helping them get that first step in to get them going. So we take a look. My first thing I should do is add 2 to both sides. We put the plus 2 on both sides. The 2's cancel out. I'm left with x over 5 is equal to 10. Okay, my next step is I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. Oh, sorry. There's the 10. Next step is I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. Whenever I multiply a fraction by 5, I always use the whole number over 1. So in this case, I'm going to use 5 over 1, not just 5. This way, they never cancel out the wrong one. They know that they cancel out. They can cancel out something on the top with something on the bottom. Sometimes it gets confusing if it's just sitting there on the side of it. So here you can see that my 5s are going to cancel out. And I'm left with x equals 10 times 5, which is 50. All right, next. Take a look at this one. Press pause here and try this one on your own. Click play when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so this one was a little different because it did have parentheses in it. First again, we place our x there. Now this one, because of the parentheses, we would actually add 8 first and then multiply that sum by 4. The result would be 20. So taking a look at our inverse operations, we would divide by 4 instead of multiply and subtract 8 as an inverse um, of adding 8. All right, so now let's take a look and put in the work. First thing we're going to do is take that 20 and divide it by 4. That result will be 5. Our next step is we'll take that 5 and subtract 8, and the result will be negative 3. So for this one, negative 3 plus 8 will give me a positive 5. Multiply that by 4, and the result would be 20. Now let's take a look at the work. The first thing here it says to do is divide both sides by 4. So we'll do that. My 4's will cancel out. I'll be left with x plus 8 is equal to 5. Notice you see 5 on both the diagram and the equation. My next step will be to subtract 8 from both sides. When my 8's cancel out, I'm left with x equals negative 3. 